Hey everybody, this is Pastor Chris coming to you live from Lexington Park Baptist Church. This is Word of Encouragement today on May the 17th, 2022, and this is PC Studios coming to you. Hey, uh, we got a special program today. We're going to have a guest here in a moment that's going to come up in here, but today as I let people start to get in, make sure you sign in. We're going out on Caster, on um, Facebook, and on YouTube, and on Twitch. If you want to be live with us, though, today for the program, unless you watch us after the noon hour, you need to be at facebook.com slash pastor Chris McCombs. Again, welcome to the program. We're picking up with where we left off this past Sunday. We're going to be talking about uh, the return in righteousness. We're looking at Thessalonica. We talked about that city uh, yesterday. Today, we're going to talk about the return, focusing this week on his return and what our proper focus should be. And we're going to look at the book of Revelation, chapter 19. Uh, in just a moment. So again, make sure you sign in. Welcome to the program, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here with us for Word of Encouragement. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you somebody today. Now, you don't know who this is, but this is the newest employee in the church. And uh, she is actually in my office right now cleaning, and she's been cleaning the whole office area, trying to get everything ready. And I know you're going to be surprised. Nobody has a clue. Uh, most of you don't probably know who all works in the office, but we are really grateful to add to our staff. Are you ready? Let's have a drum roll. She's going to come stand right here beside me. A drum roll. Stay off the picture right now. It is... Go ahead. Are you ready? Come on in. It is Abigail. There's Abigail Sandberg. So everybody say hello to Abigail and welcome her to the staff. And she's cleaning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let her kind of say a few things to, to you and... and like her job interview, see her eyes are getting really big. She's like, what? And tell us why you, why you want to work for the church. Hi. Um, so I wanted to work at the church because I wanted to help make a difference here. I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about church leadership. And I also wanted a job, and the church is a good place to work. I mean, my boss is great. Did y'all hear that? And he her did boss. Not, he did not great. pay me to say that, by the way. He she she did not. She did, she she is on payroll, so we could say I kind of hate her for that. But anyway, so if you see Abigail, if you're out there watching this, I know some like Sandy Holtzom and uh, the Maddoxes and others that are on there, Keith Brooks, they're on there every week. Make sure or every day, make sure you, if you see Abigail, you welcome her to staff. All right. Thank you, Abigail. Thank you for being here. And you can shut the door and come back in and when you get finish up whatever you're doing. Hey, so anyway, well, make sure you welcome her and to the team. And Sue Rife says she loved it. Yeah. Hi, Abigail from Kelly Krennic. So hello, everybody out there. So hey, let's go ahead and get into today's service um, and what we're going to talk about. So Revelation 19, 6 through 9, I'm going to read that for you. It says, Then I heard something like a voice of vast multitude, like the sound of cascading waters, and like the rumbling of loud thunder, saying, Hallelujah, because our Lord, the Almighty, reigns. Let us be glad. Let us rejoice. Let us give Him glory, because the marriage of the Lamb has come, and His bride has prepared herself. She was given fine linen to wear, bright and pure. For the fine linen represents the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage feast of the Lamb. He also said to me, These words of God are true. So Sunday, if you were at the church and you were here, we, we talked about focusing on this return concept. So, And I went through the different philosophies of belief, and I'm going to talk more about that tomorrow with the ten virgins. Uh, you know, but... Uh, I'll go into maybe more detail, but basically there's pre-tribulational, pre-wrath, mid-tribulational, post-tribulational views of the rapture and when the tribulation is going to happen. I don't think there's any doubt there's a tribulational, but all millennials may not believe in a tribulation, but then there's millennial views, pre-millennial, pre amillennial, post-millennial. Uh, anyway, there's different types of views of the millennial and, and the rapture and the tribulation. And so I'm going to approach things from a pre-tribulational, pre-millennial, uh, actual rapture, actual tribulation, actual millennial reign. Um, that's that's going to be my philosophy that guides me and how, how, I view, how I interpret scripture. And so I hope you have that view too, if you're out there. If you don't, um, you know, you might, you may not fully understand what I'm going to be teaching and, and my view of the rapture, my view of end times, eschatology. And that's what eschatology is. So by the time we get to Revelation 19, I want to make sure that we understand 
Not that the people of Thessalonica would have fully understood this, just like the people of Lexington Park might not, or America, or today in the 21st century. Uh, concepts of eschatology have changed, um, but certain things, like maybe their view of it, but not not the concepts themselves. Like there's the tribulation, there there's the there's the persecution, there's the there's the rapture, there's there's the church age, there's a, a millennial reign. There all these concepts are there. It's how they fit together in a package. So by the time we get to Revelation 19, we're getting towards the end. We're getting towards the great white judgment throne of Christ, where he'll separate us, where the new heaven and the new earth will about to come. And so by the time you get to this chapter in Revelation, you know, you've the rapture's happened, the glorious appearing's happening, uh, the millennial reign has happened, most, most likely, or you're in that time frame. Uh, the tribulation ha is long over. And we're coming really, God is trying to consummate everything and bring it to a conclusion to usher us into what eternity is going to be like forever and ever and ever for all of us, for the, for, you know, for, for all, all the, the saints. And so this wedding invite is really about, do you know the Lord? And if all of us here, anyone who knows the Lord has an invitation, any, anyone that has received the salvation of Jesus Christ, called upon his name for salvation, has received salvation, you have an invitation to this wedding banquet, if you will. Now, the connection here to the Lord's Supper is important. Jesus told us in the Gospels, I'm not going to, as he's talking to his apostles on the Last Supper, we know it as the Lord's Supper, but the Last Supper, which was the Passover meal, I'm never going to eat this again with you again until I'm with all of you in heaven. And so Jesus has waited until this moment in Revelation 19. I just, it's just beautiful. The invite's there. And he's waiting for all of us to assemble. He's waiting for all of us to come together. And then he's going to break bread and drink the fruit of the vine again with all of his people from all generations, from all of history. Wow. What a wedding that will be. Because we're his bride, the church. And he's the bridegroom. And so he's going to sit in here and it says, look, the announcement's been made like a vast multitude, like a cascading waters, like a rumbling of a loud thunder. And the voice being said, it's kind of like the wedding announcement, hallelujah, because our Lord God, the Almighty, reigns. His reign is supreme. His re he reigns now, but his reign will be fulfilled in this moment. It's set. What a beautiful day this will be. And therefore, it says in verse 7, let us rejoice. Let us be glad. Let us give him glory. And why are we doing that? Because the marriage of the Lamb has come and the bride has prepared herself. So, two challenges here. One, let us, or a couple here, let us be glad and rejoice and give Him glory. This should bring excitement to know we're invited to this. And so we should have this joy in our heart, no matter what we go through. Death is not the end for us, you all. This death is a portal, whether... And we've got this invite. We know we've got this ticket to this wedding ceremony. So let us be glad. Let us rejoice. Let us give him glory. Because that marriage of the Lamb, and when this day happens, we're going to be there celebrating like, a, like at a wedding, and you clap and you cheer on the wedding couple. That's us. That's what we're going to do. And then look what happens here. Because the Lamb has come and the bride is prepared. We must be prepared. What's our job now? Be prepared. What's the job tomorrow? Be prepared. What's the job ten, a decade from now? Be prepared. Are we a church, a bride, that is prepared for Jesus' return? And our answer should be yes. And we should say that with joy, rejoicing, and being glad and giving him glory. Then it goes on. I love this, verse 8. She was given fine linen, that's the church to wear, and bright and pure. For the linen represents the righteous acts of the saints. Listen, Jesus' blood washes away our sins. We become pure, we become radiant, we become fine, we become white. So this is what God does through, through what Christ has done. And then look, it says, and then the fine linen represents the righteous acts of, of the saints. All that we've ever got right, all that we've ever done, this waiting on the return but living righteously, right? These two concepts come together in this picture right here. We're ready for him. We're prepared. 
his return, and the righteous acts, the righteous acts of the saints. That's us. We're, we're the righteous. We're the saints. So anything that we've done that's been worth makes it like a fine linen. We're pleasing to the Lord. We're doing the Lord's things. So I want to encourage us as we prepare for this wedding date, as we prepare for the Lord to return, as we prepare for this banquet, as we know we have the invitation, may we be ready for the Lord to return. And when we know that his, our righteous acts, actually, he notices. He sees them. It makes him, it fills him with joy. Like we're supposed to be filled with joy that we're going to this banquet. He's filled with joy when we're, when we're radiant, when we're pure, when we're true, when we're doing those righteous things. You know, um, there's always blemishes. There's always problems because we have sin. But God knows he's taking care of that and he's bringing us to this new place where all things will be made new. And I look forward to that day as we look at our, you know, come Lord, come quickly. Uh, as a bride that we're prepared for his return, that we have the blessed invite and that the righteous acts of the saints, including our own, are guiding us. His return, that I want you to get used to this word. You're going to hear it a lot over the next year. His return requires us to live righteously. His return requires us to live righteously. May we be found faithful to that. As we say, Maranatha, come Lord, come quickly. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I hope this blesses you. I hope you learn. Tomorrow we're going to pick up, we're going to look at the five virgins in Matthew 25. And then we're going to talk about Acts 10 on Thursday. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for joining me. Remember these two realities. God loves you and so do I. You have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow.